um, you can see the depth of divot there and the sound of it relative to the small swing happens as an effect because we're staying a lot more centered and then moving into it. Welcome back to the channel guys. So in today's video, we're gonna be looking at a live lesson with Dan. Dan himself is a PGA coach and this was shot when I was over in Florida recently doing some collaboration videos. And Dan reached out to me and he wanted to get a little bit more power out of his ball striking and get him a better understanding of exactly where his inconsistencies were coming from. This is a great lesson. Dan himself is a very high level golfer and it was a thoroughly enjoyable experience working through this process with him to get the most out of his game. So I hope you enjoy this lesson. We've got two parts to this, the analysis and then the fix in the second video. Enjoy. So relative to where you are at address, right? So you set up to the golf ball, let's say your toes are a little bit too square on, and you get this nice lead arm structure, club shaft out in front of you, but upper body's tilted away. Then as you tend to swing back, you're trying to get a lot of depth of turn, but you stay too much with your chest down in this position here. Then as you're trying to shift in, this left knee stays internally rotated for too long. Makes it very hard to get your upper body loading or situated in such a, a point where you're on top of it, which will help create the speed. But then as a result of doing so, because you're a great player, you have to really drag the handle. Now, the more you drag the handle, that actually shifts the path out to the right for you and encourages the draw. But if you don't and you slightly bail on it, well then that path's going left and that's where the, the shots are really gonna struggle off the, the face with the contact as well, okay? So key number one is to narrow your stance up a little bit. We're gonna talk about a couple of inches. We're gonna get our toes flared out, especially this lead one here. Now, the big difference in the feeling to maintain what's called a relatively stable head to the top, right? If we put this golf club across your shoulders, and we were to get the feeling that as we're swinging back, our chest is extending a little bit more up towards the sky in this position here. As I then naturally move down into the ball, we can see that we're applying more pressure down onto this lead side. But if I'm a player such as yourself from this setup position and we get into this position where we feel like our chest is down, well, you can see using this golf club as a reference, how flat my shoulder plane will be. So from there, you would then drag the handle in trying to draw it, and that's where you get this sort of flippy look like this, as opposed to if my chest was slightly extending to the top, it's a lot easier for me to then sit down in the lead side, which shifts the low point forward, but also gets the path exiting more out towards the right of the target. Now, the big key here that you need to work on, which you're not at the moment, is a lot about getting more extension with your spine. And this is not necessarily a uh, physical limitation or anything like that, so you don't need to work a lot of hours in the gym, because based on your swing, I can see that you could easily do it, and your fitness and everything like that. It's a lot, a lot more about the coordination of the movement and the understanding of how to do it. So we're gonna work on a couple of drills and feelings of exactly how you'd go about that, okay? So what I want you to do is I want you to come in here, you're gonna set up to this golf ball in front of the camera like that. So, stance there is good, yeah, perfect. Close your eyes, I want about 55% of weight on your lead foot, mm -hmm. good. All right, so I want you to swing to the top and stop. Okay, so when I put you in that position there and you close your eyes, mm -hmm. where do you feel the weight distribution? Let's see. 65 on the right and from heel to toe more in the heel okay so it should be absolutely on the heel but let's say this is the top of the swing what's your understanding of where the weight distribution should be at the top of the swing like 75 on the right and mostly in the heel at the top of the swing yes okay great so i'll just get you to stand back over there for me now for a long time there was the understanding that you would load up your trail foot and then you would move down into it and then follow through. But that just encourages a lot of unnecessary swaying and movement. And that's actually not how you create a dynamic stretch or transition of power. So if you think about most other sports, right? So let's say you're throwing a ball. As your hand's going back, your maximum application of, let's say, pressure shift would be very early on in the motion. Then what happens is as your hand reaches maybe X far before it finishes its motion, 
what does your body do to create the most amount of stretch to create power? It actually recenters and goes towards. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So in golf, it's no different. And what we see with the professional golfer is the maximum amount of pressure that does get shifted to the trail foot happens actually well before the top of the swing, right? And as the lead arm moves past the lead arm parallel in this backswing position, the best, most powerful ball strikers, and think about someone like Rory, for example, who has a significant dip and movement down into his golf swing, they actually recenter back towards the target before their swing stops. And that's where you would see this lagging motion. So what you're doing at the moment is you're loading up your back foot, right? And that can simply just be that for a long time, your concept was get as far back behind it as you can to try and throw it but to create force and application and pressure into the ground, that's not how you go about it, right? So as we're swinging back, we actually need to stay to a point that if you were to stop at the top of the swing here, you would almost feel like you've got more pressure down on that lead side because the most amount of pressure you would shift, right? So let's say that 75, 80% happens earlier before you get to the top of the swing. So we would turn, 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 recenter, and then put you back into this position. And let's say that is the top of the swing. I want you to feel like you've got significantly more pressure on that lead side. At the top. At the top. So when your club reaches the top of the motion, right? So as we get to the top here, you should have already made that move back, right? Rather than going that move there. So come and stand in front. So set up to the ball. Narrow flared stance. Love that. Close your eyes. 55% of weight on the lead foot. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So swing to the top. Good. Now, I want you over here. And if you were using this as a reference now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Just relax. Breathe. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Your lead ear should still be over the ball. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, what I want you to do is just swing through. Go. Now, you probably would have felt very far forward through the golf ball but that's great because if we look at what we were seeing on the videos for the longest period of time when we were doing your analysis is through that section where your lead arm's coming down and you're moving into the ball, you're always back in space, right? Now, height, and I know this is what it's all based off, is a product of speed and loft, right? You lose your height because you had to drag it because you were so far behind it. So once we can actually get you recentering on top, then a simple like a drill, like a feet together, hitting off a tee for you mm -hmm. is one of the best exercises to actually get the feeling of how to release it properly mm -hmm. without dragging the handle in front, right? Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we're going to film you hitting some shots just with your stance adjustment mm -hmm. and me helping you recenter back to the top of the swing and then hit it from there, okay? Mm -hmm. I want you to grab a pitching wedge for me. Okay. okay, so you can see straight away, see how your ball position is too far forward in space. So for you, what you would always wanna see if you let go of the club for me, is we've got a comfortable club head distance between the lead foot and that stick. So move fo your feet this way, perfect, great. Now you're in position there. Okay. okay, so what I want you to do, swing to the top and stop. Good. I need you way more over here in space. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want you to do that again. So you're gonna swing to the top and stop, but I want you to recenter back towards the target before you swing down. So swing to the top and stop. Okay, I need you even more over here. Great, okay. Let's do that again. Perfect. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna help you move and you're gonna hit this one. Ready? So don't worry about me, you won't hit me. I need a little bit more weight forward. Great, okay, off you go. I'm going to hit this. Yep, don't worry about me. You won't hit me. Go. Okay, let's do that again. Beautiful. So if we have a look at just here as a reference, this is your before and then this is your after. See, the thing is, is this is you feeling like you're really loaded up on your lead side and we know how different feel and real is and you can still see how far back you are. So you just need to get very comfortable at trying to shift that weight even more mm -hmm. forward, mm -hmm. right? Now, when we were looking at- So the, Karen, literally, how much weight should I have on my lead foot, let's say with a five iron? At a dress. At a dress, I always want more on the lead foot than the back foot. Okay, always. and then how about with a driver? 
Uh, for driver, you can be 50-50. 50-50. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The main reason being is any athletic movement, right? Let's say you're going to throw a ball. You always start with your weight forward before it shifts back, before it goes forward. Mm -hmm. Because if you start on your back foot, this locks up. You don't get any freedom. Mm -hmm. So with you simply starting with your weight on your back foot, like we were kind of talking about before, mm -hmm. you're not able to get the same range of motion. So we have a look at these differences there. Mm -hmm. So I like that guy better. Okay, narrow the stance up a little bit. Okay, good. So relax. Good. That's where you need to be there. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily about shifting your pelvis significantly further forward. It's about getting your upper and your lower body both shifting onto the lead side. So you can see I'm not bumping. Mm -hmm. I'm just moving them onto the lead side here. Mm -hmm. okay? okay, sit up. Okay, still too much. There you go. When you rewatch this video, you go, God, that felt crazy, but mm -hmm. that's not nearly as much. This? Yep, off you go, hit it. <laughs> Great. That was good. And again. So almost a push draw. That was close. So your target line here, right, is obviously not the same thing. It's just yeah, inside that, that right. Yeah, that was. Beautiful, much better. So being in space now, what's gonna happen, just from making those adjustments, You can see how the club's actually now working slightly behind the hands, right? Mm -hmm. Which will help you get that push draw mm -hmm. versus working out and across as much. So you can see how much further left that hand path's going mm -hmm. versus here. Yes. So yeah. when this goes more out to the right, mm -hmm. that's purely an effect of you being in a better position on top of the golf ball. Mm -hmm. So you can swing in that direction as opposed to the upper body staying back yeah. and then the club arcing Wait, around. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So keep going for me. Okay, so. How's that? Just relax your arms a bit, mate. Okay. Good. So, difference between arm tension and grip pressure. Like this can be long and soft, but I don't want it tight and locked out. Okay. Right? Yeah. If you want to create maximum speed in anything you do, you never brace. Mm -hmm. You want to be active. You want to be soft. You want to create this dynamic flow. You'll always see the professional and the best professional always in constant motion. Mm -hmm. Right? Not standing there like this as we yeah. set up to it. Okay, so when you set up to it, a little bit narrower stance, right? Good, perfect, you're gonna feel really on top of it. All right, feel like you stay on top, hit the shot. Good, beautiful. So how far on top of it did you feel there? Oh, right. I mean, that, that was, you know, on our scale, that was a solid nine right there. Let's have a look here. As far as the feeling and the strike. Yeah. Was I on top of it? Probably okay. not quite. So started better. Bit of a shift off, but moved back on top of it and actually came through and hold it. That was, that was great. Mm-hmm. That was great. That was pretty close. Let's do it again. Okay. I like that. Okay, good. So I'm just gonna help you here. So swing to the top and stop. Breathe, relax. Good. Good. So I want you to really exaggerate that, okay? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect. So it's going to feel like your tailbone, right, is all the way over this left heel. Is that what you feel there? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. So restart. Okay. Awesome. Relax that lead shoulder a bit. Perfect. A little bit more way forward. Okay. Off you go. There it is. That was good. That was great. That was excellent. That was excellent. Okay. Right, I guess. I, I just. I guess the feeling I have is there's a slight reverse pivot with my with my hips. Mm -hmm. Just uh, again, that's my feel. Feel. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, Should I feel that? No. If you if you stand next to the the camera there, right. So just using this as a reference, right? If I had this across my hips, and let's say there was a wall, and you can practice this at home, and there's a wall and you're leaving maybe just a slight amount of gap, right? What we would see with the professional golfer is their trigger to start off with, there might be like a little bit of a press where that would get closer, but then that trail hip would move back and behind. So the hips being an oval shape, when you pivot an oval shape in a circle, the right hip for the right hander in space actually moves behind. So if I was to draw a line here directly up against the hip, it'll actually move behind. It will create some space. That is still just your hips turning in a circle. Yourself and many golfers load up their trail hip too much. So this, this right hip here would move into the wall, right? And then it stays there for too long, which then locks this up, doesn't allow that freedom, and then causes them to stay too far back. So what you need to work on in summary is really trying to get this feeling that once you've got a little bit more of a narrow flared, right? Comfortable club head. From the top, we're feeling like this head stays relatively stable, right? And we're almost loading back into this lead side earlier. So we're still turning, right? We're always still turning. But at the top of the swing, we're allowing our head, our chest, and our hips to feel to a point where it's staying more on top of the ball. Now, the benefit of little things like having the lead foot flared out just enables us from that position to then get this pressure shifting correctly, which will give you the power. Rather than trying to feel like I'm trying to turn my body and throw, simply just by being on top and practicing little shots like this and stepping into it, not so much worrying about the release component yet because we just need to train your body, but centered. Um, you can see the depth of divot there and the sound of it relative to the small swing happens as an effect because we're staying a lot more centered and then moving into it rather than shifting off it too much. Any question? Any questions about that? No. Great. No. So let's come in. Uh, let's grab your seven iron for me. So then down the road, obviously, similar with the driver. I yeah, we'll, we'll get you eating some drivers. Okay, narrower. Yeah, flare this. Yeah, it's going to help facilitate the pivot. It's a soft lead shoulder. Mm -hmm. Great. Perfect. Okay, so you still got too much tilt here. We need to meet you more on here. Yeah. Yeah. Great. All right, off you go. Very close. Very close. But sound wise, and looking at that divot, it's a deeper divot. It's it's not that, and it's happening a lot earlier, isn't it? So before you said that your divots were happening oh, a couple of inches later oh, and too skinny. Yeah. So these last couple that you've hit, you can see the divots happening immediately after. Yeah, which I'm happy with, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Close. And I would be surprised if we even just checked the ball speed. I know that one was a little bit heavy. But if we were to check the ball speed, it would probably move up a couple of miles per hour already just from that. Yeah. Okay, bring that right foot in a bit. All right. You're going to have to do a bit of mirror work, and you'll see this yeah. in the video later. Yeah. But the center of your uh, sternum and the center of your pelvis is too much behind each other. So. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's tilted there. Tilted, which is okay with a driver. Right. Um, but if you just turn around for a second, you want to try and with 
with what you feel, yeah. you're almost getting these stacked correctly yeah. or both on top. So yeah. if I'm sure set up. The sternum is over my belly button. Correct. If you're setting up here and you just let that club dangle, you want to see that these two are relatively online. Yeah. Now, in reality, your pelvis is going to be slightly forward, yeah. but you are still always yeah. like this. Yeah. Right. And even just that will help you make more of that centered pivot. Maybe if you just swipe it. Yeah. Where's that ball? Oh, actually, sorry. I was using that as a reference. Go back to where you were. <laughs> yeah, as always, do that. Yeah. Bring this in. Good. Good. Yeah, there you go. Now we're talking. All right, nice end to pivot. Off you go. Nice. Okay, so that ball's just a whisker too far forward there, yeah. Flare your trail foot out a little bit more, yeah. Upper body a little bit more on top. There you go. Okay, off you go. That was almost a 10, I reckon. Uh, really, setup wise, what we're looking for here, the camera's on a slight angle, but you'll be able to see within relative ease that we want the um, the, the ball just underneath the left ear and address, okay? Um, we can see that the upper body and lower body are relatively stacked on top and you've actually got a tiny little bit of tilt with your lower body before or in front of the golf ball. If we have a look over here on the left hand side, let's say we just draw this line that extends up, you can see that in space your head is behind the golf ball already. So it's actually too far behind at address. Now, as a result of doing so, as we kind of talked about, what tends to happen is we tend to shift off the golf ball and you got way too far behind it, okay? So way too far behind it, off the golf ball. Over here on the right-hand side, as we go through that same process, you can see left ear over the ball and left ear behind the ball. So over here on the right-hand side, you can see it's just see a huge difference there between the structure and the setup of the top of the backswing between the left and the right. And a lot of that is helpful due to the fact of just that more centered pivot there. So massive changes in regards to the top of the swing motion, but then coming down and shifting into transition as well. If we get this sort of lead arm into position here, you can see that your upper body is a lot more stacked on top of the golf ball. So this is an excellent reference for you to be able to use between where you get behind and effectively what happens is your upper body's tilting too far behind, you get stuck and you really have to kind of throw the club into impact. So just a, a far better position for you to be in and it's just gonna make a massive difference in increasing your ability to create that consistency coming down into impact. So we get that all the way back down to impact into this position here. We can start to see some big differences as well between really where the whole body is positioned. So upper body is a lot more stacked on top of the lower and relative to shaft lean, which we've been talking about or the distance between, let's just say the end of the handle and the sternum, you can see how much further back and behind you are over there on the left hand side relative to what you see on the right. And that is where some of that inconsistency comes from. Now through the golf ball as well, you can see a bit of a hang back over there on the left hand side versus on the right hand side coming up and out of it a lot easier. Using the butt line as a reference, you can see how your butt line's moving a lot more towards, whereas your upper body is significantly further back as well. So really at the end of the day, mate, it's all about creating this more proficient setup, narrow the stance up. Uh, from there, what we're gonna do is gonna get the ball underneath the left ear with some foot flare, and then we're gonna get that feeling that we're making a nice centered pivot to the top. The more centered we are, the more we get that chest to the sky external feeling, and that's just gonna allow you to create way more pressure and power as you then shift into the lead side. You can see the lead knees not staying as internally rotated. The golf club comes underneath, it's gonna help you get that power and less of a flip through the golf ball.